Hello. I'm Masak Sada and I'm working for Second Quadrant. So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about distributed transaction support for coordinate uh, wrappers. As the title says, throughout, it's work in progress. So, but idea here is to support distributed transaction by improving the coordinate wrapper feature. So, I'd like to start my talk with explaining what a coordinate wrapper is. The FEW stands for coordinate wrapper is an implementation of uh, a secret MET. The MET, M E D, stands for um, management of external data. That is, the coordinate wrapper is used to manage the data that reside out outside the PostgreSQL. And there are actually uh, some the way, including a DB link, to access the data outside the PostgreSQL server. But one of the biggest advantage of FAW is um, we can access those data using uh, regular SQL queries through a special type of table called the foreign table. The foreign table looks like the same as normal tables, but they actually don't have any data in the local local node. If you access foreign data, a Postgres server can a post Postgres server accesses the foreign server and return into the client. So from the the client point of view, those data looks like exists on the local node. And the the foreign data wrapper is a programmer architecture. So you can find many FDW plugin plugins FDW implementation uh, in the FDW plugin FDW foreign data wrapper page in the Postgres wiki. And in addition, foreign data foreign tables are writable from the version number three. So we can execute update delete insert on foreign tables. And this diagram shows an example on of using three uh, types of FEWs, Postgres FEW and MySQL FEW and Worker FEW. And when clients issue the query to Postgres server, so I mean the left Postgres server, and this Postgres server connects to the external data store like Postgres server or MySQL or Worker database uh, through the corresp corresponding uh, FEW plugins. So in this talk, I'd like to focus on the transaction management that when using the FEWs. So as of today, FEW plugin is uh, responsible for uh, transaction management on the remote node. I mean, FEW needs to begin and commit and or roll back the transaction on foreign server. Also, it needs to support other transaction management command such as a uh, save point or possibly uh, prepare. And as Postgres score uh, currently doesn't um, provide a dedicated way to manage foreign data, uh, foreign transactions to FEW plugins. Most FEWs which want to control the transaction need to register its own callback function to exact callback. The exact callback uh, called before committing the local transaction. So let's take a look at uh, how FEW uh, manages uh, foreign foreign transaction by holding the Postgres FEW uh, up as an example. So Postgres FEW opens and begins a foreign transaction when it accesses the remote node first time during execution. In terms of isolation level, if the local transaction isolation is uh, serializable, Postgres FEW also open, opens, um, opens a serializable transaction on the remote node. If the local transaction isolation level is not serializable, it uses repeater reader isolation level. This ensures if a query coming from the client performs multiple table scan on the for, uh, on the remote server, it will get a snapshot consistent result for for all the scans. So this behavior seems good in some cases, but uh, there are two 
major issues. So atomic commit problem and real issues. And these two issues are what I'd like to focus on this uh, th this presentation. So let's get into the details of the atomic commit issue first. So as of now, foreign transactions are committed one by one before the local transaction commit. So there is no guarantee that uh, guarantee um, the all servers, including local, are uh, committed or all bugged. So and uh, well, yeah, I believe that next slide shows a program with a diagram. This diagram shows the transaction commit procedure when using the FEW. So there are two remote nodes and client writes the data on those nodes through the FEWs and issues a commit. Local node commits for in for in transaction by one, one by one, and then the commit to the local transaction and return the result to the client. So this seems to this seems to uh, work fine. That should be fine in that should be fine I think uh, 95 percent cases. But what happened when this happened? Before committing the transaction on remote server 2, it had some problem. And it could be anything, server crashes, network partition, whatever. And in this case, the local transaction can load back its transaction, but it's already committed the foreign transaction on remote node 1, remote 1 node. So the outcome of this transaction is the transaction is committed on the remote 1 and the load back on the remote node. Uh, load box the transaction on the local node but we have no idea about the transaction on the one two so that is the problem which we want to avoid when using the foreign wrappers but please note that that uh, data on the individual node can keep consistent even in this case as long as we use the transactional database on the remote node but on the other hand uh, from the global point of view, data is inconsistent if this kind of failure happen. So to resolve this issue, we can use the two-phase commit protocol, which is the one of the most famous consistent protocol. The two-phase commit consists of the two phases, as, in, as its name suggests, the so prepare phase and uh, the commit phase. So this protocol always starts with the uh, prepare phase. In this phase, coordinator sends a prepare request prepare message to the old parchment and in the commit phase, the coordinator sends the commit request to the old parchment or remote node. If old parchment sent OK in OK, re OK response in the prepare phase. If even one of the parchment sent no response or energy response in the uh, prepare phase, a coordinator send a rollback request to the all of them. The first proposal to support surface commit to um, for interrupt transaction management was proposed um, at the two, 2015. And I joined it uh, 2017 and currently I'm proposing the sample set to the Postgres uh, development community. This feature is not committed yet, any version. It's um, in progress feature. But with this feature, the Postgres will manage the foreign transaction, I mean the, the transactions that open on the foreign servers. And new uh, FEW APIs uh, will be introduced, the commit, rollback, uh, prepare and get prepare ID. S so the FEW which want to support transaction can implement two APIs commit and rollback and in addition if they want to support the atomic commit as well it needs to implement the prepare api in addition to these two apis and get prepare api is uh, is optional so i'm going to deep dive to how postgres core manage the foreign transaction with this, with this feature the transaction commit procedure will change 
um, firstly it does prepare all for the transaction and then commit locally and finally it commit all for the transaction prepared on uh, foreign servers as the first step the core passes the information about the foreign transaction uh, to disk via via wire call later head logging so that the foreign transaction information can be recovered after a restart. These wire records include which foreign servers involved being with the which local transaction. So in other words we will end up with uh, end up uh, recording the wall at at each phases. So at the first first step we purchase the foreign transaction information and the second step we purchase the local commit uh, the commit record in the local node and the far and at the third step uh, commit prepared also passes the commit record of the transaction on the foreign servers and the core purchase information about a foreign transaction to the to disk um, via wire record so that they this can be reco recovered after restart um so i just already mentioned about that so i mean um we can recover the information about the which foreign servers might have the prepared transaction that way we can terminate the prepared transactions on the foreign server even after crash also we we um i introduced a new background worker um, called transaction resolver. Transaction resolver is uh, has two responsibilities. One is it executes commit prepared message. It executes commit prepared in progress for in transactions. I mean that is um, the prepared preparing for in transaction and committing prepared for in transaction are performed by different processes. And another one is to uh, resolve uh, recovered foreign transaction or in the transaction. I will explain uh, them for details in the rest of my transaction, uh, rest of my presentation. So all right, this um, this diagram shows how Postgres commit the transaction using the two-phase commit. When client issued a commit, the local node sends prepare message to all remote nodes. The remote node prepare the commit their transaction, but modified it is not visible for the transaction yet. And then local node does commit locally. After the local commit, the process who received the commit request from the client takes over to the transaction resolver process represented the TL in this thread and the process that waits. The transaction res resolver process fetches the foreign transaction information from the shared memory and send a commit prepared message to all involved foreign servers. After the committing all prepared foreign transactions, the resolver process releases the waiting, waiting backend process and commit prepared makes all pending data make makes all pending data visible for other other transactions. So with this feature, the bucket process does the prepare phase of the two-phase commit, whereas the transaction resolver pr process does the commit phase. So in this scenario, after the local node prepared one transaction on remote one. The remote 2 node fails to prepare transaction, let's say, remote node 2 crashed before doing the prepare. So as a local node failed to get uh, OK response from the, the remote 2, it turned to the rollback. So it does rollback the local transaction and sending rollback prepared message to a remote 1 node. So as a result, all transactions uh, successfully loaded, loaded back. So the next scenario, um, the local node prepared a foreign transaction on two remote nodes and did local commit, but the crash after uh, after the local node. So during restart, 
the local node recovers the foreign transaction information. The point here is um, the all foreign transaction information have been well logged before preparing on the remote nodes. So that them so that it this information can be uh, is uh, is this information uh, recovered during re the recovery. So then transaction resolve our launches and it sends the commit prepared message to all remote nodes. So as a result, all transactions are successfully committed in this case. So please note that in this case, the all transactions should be committed. It should not be rolled back because the local transaction on the coordinator is already committed. And um, as of now, the all steps are performed synchronously. So as two-phase commit is a blocking protocol, if even one patch band doesn't work, it's the protocol also doesn't, uh, it, the protocol is blocked. So, so client might want to cancel the transaction during waiting for a transaction resolver. So, even in this case, the client can cancel cancel waiting safely. Safety. When it when client requests to cancel, um, the local node return to the prompt to the client while leaving the work to the transaction resolver process. So this is the reason why preparing transaction and committing prepared transaction are performed by different processes. During commit uh, during committing the local uh, during committing the prepared foreign transaction, it can cancel writing anytime because it's just waiting, not doing some doing something that uh, can lead an error. If it did something that can be can lead can lead an error after the local commit, it would end up raising an error, but it's too late to change over rollback because the local transaction is already committed. So the by introducing this feature we can resolve the atomic commit issue I described I described. The after uh, atomic commit feature uh, served this problem from the perspective of durability um, but uh, uh, durability perspective of uh, atomicity but from the perspective of isolation uh, there still uh, is atomic visibility program so atomic so transaction is satisfied that the atomic uh, visibility property uh, if uh, either either all or none of the each each transactions updates are observed by other transactions the foreign transactions are committed by transaction resolvers but there is no uh, guarantee their commits are performed at the exactly the same time so therefore if a transaction starts between those commits it takes a snapshot which includes part of the result of a tr distributed transaction so that is atomic visibility uh, program so either all or none of uh, each transaction's update should be observed by other transaction. There are some uh, solutions or uh, techniques uh, for um, atomic visibility issues, but um, I'd like to introduce other lead issue uh, that can happen when using the Postgres FEW. And I believe the one of the most important goals of uh, FEW is if the client uses Postgres FEW with a foreign server, it needs to function the same way as a single Postgres server would do. In other words, it's really perfect if the client can use Postgres with foreign, uh, foreign data wrappers while not being aware of the foreign data wrappers at all. But unfortunately, it, in terms of the transaction, current post current FEW doesn't work even doesn't work so even if 
a transaction involves only one remote node, especially when the read write mix workload. So before going to the concrete examples, let's review some transaction anomalies. The Shaker standards defined four transaction isolation levels read committed, read uncommitted, read committed, repeater read, and serializable. In this talk we we focus on the on read committed and repeater read. So non repeater read anomaly is uh, when transaction re reading the data, it finds that uh, data has been mod modified by another transaction. That is, suppose you did select the counter as the from table one, and let's say, uh, let's say you got the one hundred rows. There was and there was a concurrent transaction which deleted the, the ten rows. In the same transaction, if you did the did the select count as the from table again, you will get the nineteen rows if the tr concurrent transaction has had committed. It's non repeatable read. It's it's non repeatable read. It may occur in real committed isolation level. And with possible repeatable uh, repeatable read isolation level, the phantom read won't happen. In Postgres repeatable read, repeatable read, all tra all uh, reads within the transaction is the data using the one snapshot. Therefore, uh, the result will not change even if you executed the same query multiple times and there was a concurrent transaction which modifies the data. So okay, um, in this example, the two client issues the shake the one shaker to the local possible server which connect to the remote two remote uh, one remote node using uh, the foreign possible FAW. So the one client start the first client starts a read committed transaction and gets the number of results the number of tuples of the table whose data is actually stored in the remote server the result is the 100 rows in this example. When, F uh, when FreeW process FreeW access to the remote node, it starts repeat a read transaction. This is a documented behavior uh, as explained before. And before the client fetches the the number of the tuples again, another client date the one 10 tuples and commit. As the first client uh, first client transaction on the remote node has opened in repeatable read isolation level, it returns the same result when the first client uh, fetches um, sends the same query again. It gets 100 words again. This is strange. Uh, this, is, this is strange and uh, This behavior is non repeater read. It can repeat a read even the transaction start the read committed transaction. Right? Because the first client starts the transaction in read committed isolation level and another delete transaction is committed before reading the data again, it should get ninety row instead. Where it gets the 100 rows. So, okay, then let's next use the repeater read isolation level in the local transaction. So, in this example, two clients access two tables that are located on the different remote node. Um, both tables has 100 rows each. And one client, the first client, starts the repeater read transaction then get the number of the tuples of the table 1 and get 100 rows as a result. The before the client access table 2, other client delete 100 rows from the table 2 and commit. And when the first client reads the table 2, it gets 19 rows as a result. Because it's the first time for the first client to access the remote node 2, it starts a new transaction 
on that server on the remote 2 server so but the result 90 rows is strange again because it's like the non repeatable read even the first client start the repeatable read transaction so it should get the 100 rows instead so I described how client gets different result than the way using the single Postgres server there is not no guarantee that the client uh, cluster returns cluster return the consistent result among all the foreign servers even when there is only one foreign tables so to provide a consistent real result each node need to see its own data with a globally consistent snapshot the snapshot could be anything so currently Postgres uses a set of uh, transaction ID XID as a snapshot but it's more uh, commit sequence number or timestamp can be snapshot in principle although current Postgres doesn't support them and the point here is the all participant uses globally snapshot globally consistent snapshot to see the data so Postgres Excel uh, which is the fork version of the Postgres uh, achieved this by employing the global transaction manager node which is the separate node responsible for uh, global responsible for uh, providing the global consistent snapshot to all dead node so i mean so therefore um, all transaction need to access gtm global transaction manager node to get a snapshot whenever it begin or commit or roll back the transaction Similarly, Google Park Writer has similar concept called Timestamp Oracle. Timestamp Oracle produces the timestamp is the strictly increasing order. So node gets the time timestamp from the timestamp oracle and use it as a time when read or write operation happens. So in this case the timestamp is a snapshot. But a big downside would be central transaction manager could be single point of failure we will end up with uh, and end up requiring uh, needing the secondary node for gtm node so it's yeah it's also as cost so this is the one approach to provide global consistent real result but actually there are various techniques and solutions from academic papers and as well as uh, commercial databases so many professionals research this this area so in this in the rest of my talk i'm going to introduce one technique i picked one technique called clock si so clock si is uh, proposed at 2013 and the implementation of uh, Croc SI is uh, was proposed at, uh, the, the two years ago by Stas Kirbich. We, uh, it's still under the development. It's not uh, committed to the any post version. So, but the basic idea is that each participant uses the its local timestamp as a commit sequence number. So each node uses it's local time stamp to see what version of data they can see so of course the local time on each node are different so we cannot expect this time stamp always shows the exactly the same time so but crook si solves this problem by having reader wait for the time to be synchronized so i'd like to briefly introduce how crook si prevents crook is skill issue the suppose there are two nodes that has a local clock, and the local local clocks uh, in a uh, local clock no in node B is slightly behind by a uh, certain amount of time. The transaction one start and the transaction one start at the timestamp T, and read item X located on the node B. 
the lead request from node A arrives at node B at timestamp T dash, which is slightly still slightly behind the timestamp T. As node B, instead of the leading the, the item X immediately, the lead request for uh, item X waits until the local time of node B to reach timestamp T. So this is the how clock a uh, clock SI prevents a clock skew issues. So besides this clock skew issues, using local timestamp as a snapshot or using timestamp as a snapshot has uh, several challenges, but this paper solves th these issues by interesting and the uh, simple approaches uh, simple approaches. So this but this paper solves these issues by inter interesting and simple approaches. So I'm not going to introduce the algorithm, this algorithm further or for more detail, but the, the it's very interesting algorithm and it's very interesting paper, so please read it for details. So one of the biggest advantages of this approach uh, is that there is no single point of failure, which is very great. And there is no central managers central management component. So maybe you you you've read the Google Spana paper or you've had the, the Cockroach DB and they have a similar concept. The, but the maybe downside would be the transaction latency would depends on the uh, depends on the clock draft. So okay just a quick recap of my talk. So foreign data wrapper is the powerful feature to access the distributed data across the heterogeneous data stores. But uh, given that the one of the most important goals of the, the foreign data wrapper is uh, if the, the client uses the Postgres with foreign servers, it needs to function the same way as a single Postgres server would do. A big missing piece is, is the a big missing piece is the transaction management. So several ideas are proposed and still under development. And two PC, the two phase commit over uh, for the data wrapper, uh, and clock SI, the both patches are under development and in progress. That's all. Thank you for listening to my talk.